can't, I can't even with this hair, but, um, it is what it is. I have never done a, um, product review before, but I am trying something new. So I figured I would, um, let you know how I feel about it, um, from beginning to end for, um, life circumstance reasons, I think all around, I wasn't able to get the yarn that I really wanted to, and I had to get this product instead. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, if you know me at all, you've followed my page or seen any of these YouTube videos, I love to knit socks and every year I knit everybody in the family a pair of socks for their birthday. Um, last year, I think it was last year. I don't, I don't even know anymore, but I had everybody's yarn up front for the entire year. So when it came close to their birthday, I already had it ready to go. I just had to, um, ball it up and, and get going. And I found that that was very, very super helpful. So I have wanted to do that again and I was kind of biding my time and waiting, but I really can't wait anymore. Um, so instead of getting my usual or what I would have preferred, um, because although I am a very frugal, practical person, I've become a little bit of a yarn snob. Um, so anyway, um, this is what I got. It is a uh, yarn bee, um, authentic hand dyed tonal um, yarn. Um, this is a Hobby Lobby product and I do love Hobby Lobby and um, I do like their yarn, um, what I have used, which is usually the, um, uh, I love this yarn. That's usually what I get. I use that to make the coronavirus blanket that I made, um, the C2C blanket for my bed. Um, so I do like their products. I've just never used this one in particular before. So that's the tag. Um, this is called Lavender Dusk is the shade. It is a super fine or size one, um, yarn and it is made of 100% superwash, uh, merino wool. You know, it's really sad. I didn't even look at that before I picked it up and purchased it. <laughs> I just knew it was the right size to make socks and it felt right. So I went with it. But this is the colorway for this one in particular. I, I like it. Um, it feels okay. Um, so the ultimate test is going to be how does it ball up and how does it knit? Um, it is 100 grams or uh, three and a half ounces. Yeah, 100 grams, three and a half ounces. So um, we shall see. I'm going to uh, ball it up here and I'll let you know how that goes and give you the step-by-step -step blow as I go along. Um, this is it. I've unfurled it. Um, yeah, so far so good. It's got the little strings on it here that I'll take off once I start winding it so everything seems to be on the up and up so far uh, let me see show you the tag again it says that it's um holding this sideways Let's turn the camera come on babe all right there we go it says that it's made in turkey i don't know what makes this hand dyed? I don't know if there's actually people in Turkey hand dyeing this for them. I don't know. If I can find out, I will, and I will let you know. I know there are people who are not fans of Hobby Lobby and people who are. Um, and you know what? I'm not even going to go there. It is what it is. This is what I bought. I'm just reviewing the product right now. But if I can find out more about, you know, like what's actually happening, is it actually hand dyed? Because I looking right here, 
it's got a number. So, and then it looks like it's got a die lot number too, which again, doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of whether it was hand dyed or, um, you know, batch dyed by machine. But anyway, we shall see. I had to A, um, take two chairs from my dining room set and bring them in my bedroom and uh, come in here and lock the door so I could do this uh, in secret. Um, I don't have a uh, wool winder. I just do it by hand. Um, I, as you can see, I string the skein across the back of the chairs and then I just wind it by hand. And then as I'm going, I literally use a food scale. Well, I guess it's the postal scale. And I just weigh um, the ball. And when it gets to be 50 grams, then I uh, cut it off. And then that usually does it. It usually gets it right, um, at least close enough so that I can knit until I'm done with the wool or done with the sock. Turn the camera around so you can see my face. Um, I knit socks toe up two at a time on two short circular needles um, and if you're interested in how I do that you can pop on over to the uh, tutorials um, playlist and I have a step-by-step -step start to finish um, tutorials on how I do that but since I do it toe up I can make the cuff as long as it needs to be or as long as I want it to be it's either till I run out of yarn um, or I'm satisfied and I stop. So um, I'm going to get to winding and I'll let you know how, how that goes and how it compares to um, my usual or yeah, my usual. Okay. Right away. Mm, this lighting's bad. Right away. There were problems um, getting the little strings off of the skein so that I could start winding it up. Um, there were like extra bits of fiber or fluff in there, I don't even know. But um, I got it all done, and after that I didn't have any problems. It wound up perfectly fine. Um, I got one 50 gram ball, and then I got one 60 gram ball. So I guess I got more for my money on this particular skein, um, but I made the mistake of not weighing the entire thing before I started winding it. If I had, then I would have known that I had an extra, you know, 10 grams to work with and I could have divvied it up more evenly, but five grams is not going to make or break a sock, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> especially for adult-ish feet. Um, so, yeah. Um, it doesn't feel as nice as a skein of hand-dyed wool from an indie dyer. Um, and certainly, I think the last pair of socks I made were for... No, I made a pair for my mom, but um, before that I had made a pair for my youngest daughter. And that had a little bit of silk in it, so I think I'm still having a little bit of muscle memory on um, how nice that felt to have that little bit of silk in it, but um, it doesn't have as much bounce either. So um, I, we'll see. I'm, I'll be knitting it up. I'm going to start knitting it up and I will just keep making updates uh, as I go along. Um, and then when I'm all done, I could be able to compile all the videos that I made and give you the full rundown on the Hobby Lobby hand-dyed authentic tonal uh, superwash merino from Turkey. <laughs> I got the socks going here. Um, my two at a time on two short circular needles. Um, so far, so good. It's still not as lush of a yarn as what you would probably get from an indie dyer, um, but it's okay. I like the colorway for sure. It was a little splitty at the beginning with my cast on, but again, I think that's just 
because of the way I cash things on, it makes that first row um, a little bit difficult and the wool gets kind of twisted out of place, making it um, splitty, I guess. Not explaining that very well, but you know how like if you, you can twist it tighter or you can untwist it and you'll start to see the separate fibers of the um, yarn. Um, because I cast on backwards, I think that kind of untwists the yarn and then the fibers become separated. And so that first row, you have to be a little bit careful. But um, moving on from that, I haven't had any issues. Um, again, it's not as lush. It's uh, not as squishy. And I kind of feel like this is a little brittle. Um, is the word that I can think of. I've obviously been watching some uh, hand dyeing uh, and natural dyeing videos where if you add iron to your dye as a means of being able to darken the color, it can make the yarn brittle. So some, some areas kind of feel thinner than others and I was wondering if maybe that was part of the particular dyes that they decided to use. But anyway, this is the progress so far and I will keep updating you as I go along. Okay, I'm providing an update like I said I would. I have knitted the socks so as you can see. Um, I do these toe up. Um, so the, this is the bottom of the, uh, boy, this lighting's bad, sorry. But this is the bottom of the sock. Flip it over. So I'm doing the heel. And this is a um, like a reinforced heel. Um, overall, since I've gotten this far, I'm pretty happy with the way this feels. I'm definitely getting the um, extra layer that is intended. Um, in the heel to make it stronger and more cushy and comfortable. Um, so everything seems to be working up perfectly fine um, so far. Now that I'm going to turn the um, turn the heel shortly and then I'm going to have to pick up my gusset stitches and that could be a defining moment in whether I really like this yarn or not. Um, because since I knit the socks on two short circular needles, as you can see, picking up the gussets is a little bit tricky and there's a lot of stitches on the needles um, at one time. So uh, I, it may turn out that, you know, I don't know, the yarn is splitty or it's very difficult. I don't know. We'll see. I'm definitely... Um, trying to poke holes in this yarn in a sense because um you know if i had my druthers i would do nothing but support uh indie dyers but i realized that that's just not possible all the time it's certainly not possible for everybody um, economically so um you know sometimes you got to do and work with different things so i'm really trying to be objective uh, as i can about reviewing this Hobby Lobby um, tonal hand-dyed yarn. Hey everyone, I am done knitting the socks with the Hobby Lobby hand-dyed tonal yarn. So I wanted to uh, wrap up this yarn review uh, video and show you the finished project and give you just a few more of my thoughts on working with this particular yarn. So here they are all finished. Um, I think in the last segment I had said that I would be interested to see how um, picking up the gusset stitches went considering um, casting on was a little bit uh, more difficult because um, the yarn was a little splitty. So um, if you've seen any of my other um, knitting tutorials of knitting socks um, two at a time on uh, two short circular needles, I use a... Um, I think it's a combination of like a provisional and uh, Turkish cast on. Wish I could remember because I feel like I say something different every time, but 
in any case, um, the way I do it makes this nice little ridge um, that I, I just really, really love. I, I, it never gets old for me in terms of uh, seeing this particular design uh, on a sock. But if the yarn is splitty, look, dog hair. If the yarn is splitty, this can be a little bit tricky and you have to go slower and, and be careful. So I was thinking that the gusset stitches would be the same and they were a little bit, but overall it wasn't bad. Um, got the reinforced heel. Um, yeah, I, I think overall I'm happy with this yarn. It is not as squishy um, as some of the um, indie dyers uh, that I have purchased from, the smaller uh, independent dyers. That could change when we wash them. I'm not sure. And it could also be a feature of the um, color. Uh, that I chose. This is pretty dark. This is might be one of the darker um, yarns that I've used, darker colorways. And I, if I remember what I saw on YouTube about dyeing um, correctly, the darker the color, sometimes the harsher it is on the wool. So anyway, um, it could be something that ends up not being a problem after we give it a wash, or it could just be a side effect of the particular color in which case it's nobody's fault it just is what it is so yeah if you're thinking about perhaps dipping your toe into sock knitting and you want to try something pretty um, but you don't necessarily got the cash um, to experiment with um, an indie dyed yarn uh, which can be more expensive because they are certainly made by hand individually batch by batch one-of-a-kind colors like can't say enough about the greatness of it, but it costs some cash, you know, like it should. You pay what you get for. I mean, you, did I say that right? I didn't. You get what you pay for. Um, so yeah, um, you might want to give this a go if you're getting started in knitting and you just want to experiment and see if knitting socks is going to be something for you. And I'm sure, uh, let me turn the camera around. I am sure that um, once you knit a sock, whether you do it one at a time, toe up, toe down, two at a time, um, small circular, nine inch, two circuit, whatever, magic loop, as soon as you knit a sock, you're going to be addicted. It, they are like potato chips. Can't eat just one. Can't have just one. So, yeah, purchasing something like this Hobby Lobby um Tonal yarn might be a way to ease in um, to something that uh, is going to become a addictive hobby for sure. And um, come join us on the dark side <laughs> is what I have to say to that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this yarn review. Please leave a comment in the box below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you might want to see on future uh, Doll Belly Knits episodes. And yeah. Uh, stay wealthy, stay wealthy, yeah, stay wealthy, stay healthy, stay well, maybe make some cash, get wealthy, and uh, we'll see you next time.